Hi, I'm Kathy with Design by Kathy. Today, I want to show you how to do a dirty resin pour on an 18 inch tabletop. So let's get started. So here is my 18 inch uh, little tabletop. Um, sadly, I've had this for so long, I don't remember where I got it and I cannot find where I got it. However, I will post below some links to, I found some Etsy sites that had some uh, really quality looking and well, very nicely priced uh, rounds. Then this is uh, pine and that's what they had also. So I will leave those links below. I've already put a coat of primer. I used this um, Bullseye 123 primer. Um, it is a very, very, very low odor primer. Uh, I, I'm doing, I, you know, it was in my garage when I put this uh, coat of primer on and very low, very low odor. So, uh, and it dried really fast. So I was really happy about that. Now, normally when I do my uh, resin, I like to have that pre-mixed, but I wanted to uh, go ahead and do that today with you guys because I, I've realized there's some things, you know, that I want to talk about, and this is, you know, just for FYI on resin. I'm going to be using this um, amazing clear coat. It, of course, does come in the two parts, the hardener and the resin. Uh, this is made, or I got this at a company called Aluma Light, and this product is made for uh, tabletop surfaces. So this is exactly what we need. Now, this is a one-to-one -one ratio. So I'm going to use these little lines on my little seven ounce cup as a measure. I'm probably, I'm mixing a little more than I might would normally mix up for a project, but um, I don't want to run out for sure. I don't want to get to the, you know, the last little spot on this tabletop and not have enough. I think this comes out a lot faster, so I can leave the spout on there. Should have drawn little, usually I draw little lines, but okay. Right there, I think those are pretty darn even. Okay, so that's what we want. They said one to one ratio. <clears throat> so now we're going to mix them together in a separate cup. Try to rake it all off the sides because again we want this perfectly one to one ratio so you don't want to don't want to leave any in the bottom. <laughs> the, this part of it is so much stickier and it's a little harder to get it out of there. I think we've got that. Try to rake it all off of my popsicle stick. And now you want to stir it, you know, change directions, scrape the bottom. The thing is, you don't want to stir it like a cake batter because, um, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> resin forms uh, bubbles, if you've not dealt with resin before, and double, bubbles are uh, any resin artist enemy. But the harder you, if you stir it real vigorously, that lets air get in it and and create more bubbles. So you do want to, you want it mixed and blended very, very well, but you just don't want to do it too aggressively and vigorously. I don't know if the camera can pick up, you know, you see there's some bubbles in there right now, but I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes and that lets the bubbles come to the surface or go ahead and dissipate. 
Just don't want a whole lot of bubbles popping up. So again, just blend, don't vigorously. We're not whisking an egg or cake batter. Or even if you were blending paint, resin is just, just different because of the bubbles. But again, it's very important, the ones that tell you one-to-one -one ratio, um, don't think that, oh, I'm gonna add a little bit more hardener and it's gonna work better. It does not. Uh, you'll come out with your, whatever your project, not curing correctly, it'll be sticky. So definitely, whichever resin you end up buying or purchasing, follow the directions. Set that aside, I'm going to show you the colors that I've chosen to use today. <clears throat> this is Sea Mist Pearl, uh, Craft Smart. Uh, this came from Michaels. It's a really pretty pearl color. I'm going to use this Folk Art Brush Metal uh, in Rose Gold. And then I want just a little bit of white. So here is what we're going to do now. I don't have a huge surface, so I'm going to pour these on top of my, use, actually use my, my board, but I don't want to drip on it. So I've got three colors, I've got three cups, so I'm going to mix my resin between these three cups, my blended, my blended resin. Oh gee, if you hear that sound in the background, it's not me, I promise. There's construction right behind us. And no matter how much I try to close myself off from it, it's so close to us, you can still hear it. So I apologize. I do not have people in my <laughs> people in my house hammering while I'm trying to do this, but it is construction back there. I'm going to shake this really well. And I'm going to add my paint to the resin. It doesn't take a lot because basically what we're doing is coloring the resin. Still don't want to stir too vigorously, but I want this well blended. As far as the primer, uh, things I had read, uh, as far as priming wood, it basically said it's a personal preference, but I don't know, I went ahead and primed it. You know, I don't know whether I want to use, would want to use this inside or outside, so I thought I would go ahead and prime it for, you know, that way it could be for either. Oh, this rose gold is beautiful. Oh yeah, that's gorgeous. And then our little bit of white.
Okay, there are our three colors. <clears throat> then we'll take an additional cup and we're gonna start our dirty pour. I'm gonna take a little bit of this, pour in the bottom. And then I'm gonna layer. And I'm gonna continue that until I've, I've done all of my paint. But again, it's just gonna be layered on top of each other. until we have all of it that we mix separately together. Okay, and there we have it. You can see why this, this is what constitutes the dirty pour. We do not mix this together. You want it layered just like that. And for this part, I will put on some gloves. And I have my, my surface protected. Um, I've just got like parchment paper because this is gonna flow off of the edges and, oh, I'm hoping it doesn't flow onto the floor, but, um, Definitely want to have your gloves on for this part. I'm gonna make sure I move everything out of my way here so I don't knock anything over. Okay, let's see what we get here. Okay, I'm really hoping I have a, I have this sitting on a box if you're wondering what I have it elevated with. I'm just gonna turn it and let the resin out of, I want it to flow off the edges, but I wanna make sure all the top is covered before I start losing it all on my table. So I'm just gonna keep turning. Well, and I'm almost all, almost thinking that I don't have enough. It's really hard to judge. I haven't done this project before. I've been dying to do it, but uh, I think I need more resin. We'll see. That wow, looks pretty marbled <laughs> looks great but I do think I need some more well as luck would have it I did exactly what I said I didn't want to do so uh, I took a little break mixed up some more um, 
definitely the seven ounce cup is not enough, but I've still got a little time here because this hasn't had a, an opportunity yet to really start setting up. So I'm going to pour this on because again, you, you have a, a certain amount of uh, working time with resin and you don't want to, you don't want to run out of it. But anyway, I mixed up some more. Uh, this is a 16 ounce cup. The seven ounce just wasn't going to cut it there. So now this should, we should be able to cover the whole thing now. My second mix, I added a little less white. Um, I really wanted the pearl, the Seamus pearl, and it's coming through. It's This is really making a really cool marbled look here. I love it. But again, I was a little too conservative. Definitely get your 16 ounce or more uh, cup to, to mix, you know, mix your resin and your paint. Oh, goody, it's dripping all down my arms. <laughs> but I need this to, let's get this this side. Looks like we're. I almost need a gripper underneath because I'm scared I'm gonna, I don't wanna lose this into the floor. There we go. Okay, this thing is a little heavy, folks. <laughs> oh, and I'm wiping it all off over here, but that, I think that's okay. We can still get our edges, but this, it's gotta, we gotta get the surface good and covered here. It's not there. Okay, my arm is really getting in a bind. Okay, let me see if I can scoop my thing back over here. Taking this extra paint that's stripped off, paint resin, and just applying it to these edges. Lots left there, folks. Ooh. You want to definitely try to get any resin that's on you off pretty quick. You don't want it to start hardening on your skin. Uh, 
And it's, you know, if you don't know whether it's, uh, there's some people that can be allergic to it. So uh, if you don't know whether you're allergic to it or not, definitely cover up your arms. I'm going to take now my little torch and I'm going to go over this. As you can see, I'm not applying the flame directly to the, the piece, but it's you can see where it's hitting it just enough. This will pop any but any additional bubbles that we we might have because again, this is a tabletop and we want it to be smooth as glass. Okay, surely I have covered it all now. And what I want to do. Uh, as this continues to drip off, I don't want the little, you know, I don't want it to really cake up underneath. So I'm just going to continuously, until it, you know, stops dripping, I'm going to take up, just take a popsicle stick here and continue to scrape off underneath there. You can tape it off if you want, tape off underneath. And there we have it, our tabletop. I think it turned out really pretty. I love the rose gold and with just the little, we have little hints of the sea, uh, sea, sea mist, sea mist pearl coming through. Um, I think it turned out really, really pretty. Uh, this will cure, uh, you can touch it after about 12 hours, but it really takes 48 to 72 hours to, to cure completely. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And if you like it, I hope you'll like it and share it with your friends and give this a try. But whatever you do, make it yours, make it personal, and you can do it.